Hello, welcome to this session. I'm Bardo Knudsen, I'm, and I'm going to talk about what's new in warehouse posting and entries. We'll briefly touch upon how it works until now, and then how it will work from now on, and what you need to be care of, you as a partner or developer. So the way warehouse working and most other ledgers is that only one user can post at the time and you usually have a register, like a warehouse register, and then some entries. And since only one user at the time can post, these entries will come in consecutive order. And the warehouse register then knows that it owns from entry number A to B. And a brief look at code, doesn't look exactly like this, but something like this, is that when we create new entries, we do a lock table, and then we do a find last to find the last entry, and then we increment that entry number, and then we continue that to increment and assign that to the new entries, and then we insert. Most of you should be familiar with this. And similarly, if we do a drill down from the register, you can see that we do a simple set range on the entry number with the warehouse registers from and to entry number. So this is how it works today or until now. In BZ25, we will allow multiple users at the same time to post. And we'll do that by using number sequences. As you can see in the example here, which is an elaboration from before, that there's some mix between green and blue entries and the red and green entries. And the way the code looks now, conceptually, is that we get the next entry number from a function which basically just calls to a number sequence and then gives you the next number. We also need to inform the warehouse entry to which see, uh, register it belongs to. So there's also a new field for warehouse register that we get from the register number. And finally, instead of just inserting, we call a new function that we call insert record. And that's because maybe someone else has posted old style with a lock table, um, find last and so on. So what we do there is we try to insert and if that doesn't succeed, we need to reset the number sequence. But otherwise, it's business as usual. The last thing you notice here is that we also have a shift bucket number that we assign to a semi-random number between 0 and 4. Because what many people don't know is that if you have a combination of values in a shift index, for instance, item number and location, and two users insert warehouse entries to the same item and location at the same time, they will lock each other due to the index. So by adding this um, extra shift bucket number, we will avoid that, or at least reduce the risk. On the drill down, just as before, except that we additionally filter on the register number. So either it's zero because it's from before 25, or it is the register number. We did this to avoid expensive upgrades. And finally, why do you care? Well, you care if you work on warehouse entries and you have an extension or an app that creates entries or relies on the way we assign numbers. For instance, we have uh, an event that's called on init something that we call after we have initiated the warehouse entry, but before we insert it. And for instance, you can see we pass on the current counter, or the entry number, and we also pass on the warehouse register. So I suspect somebody uses it to insert extra warehouse entries. Um, and if you do, then you might want to implement the same as we have done. If, for whatever reason, it doesn't work for you, you can go to the feature keys and disable this function. So there is a feature key that we have enabled by default, but you can turn it off. And in the code, there is a function in the warehouse setup that allows you to read it easily. So you can, you can see what we've done here. 
And that's basically it. Um, thank you. So I, I'll stop here with the new recipe or new pattern to implement. Thank you.